100 factions, 1,000 visitors, and 1 frame per second. Because today in RimWorld, we're going to be combining 100 factions with the Hospitality mod in order to harvest a recession-causing amount of cash in exchange for frying my computer. I'm the Grim Cleeper, and before we get into the video, consider subscribing to the channel. As soon as you do, I'll donate 7 kidneys to the local hospital. I'll even throw in a few hearts if you like the video as well. Anyways, let's get into the video. Starting with adding some factions. Gameplay problems can occur with more than 11. Well, it's a good thing we have like 180 and to make things even worse I'm also gonna be generating the world at 5% size We're just gonna make this look terrible and loading into the game. Oh my god So I'm gonna start as far away from everyone as I can way in this temperate forest biome off in the corner I'm also gonna deactivate the ideology system because when you use hospitality that can mess things up pretty badly for our colonists We really just need someone good at social because that's gonna help us a ton in terms of hospitality and and getting into the map, we have... Eh, this is all right. And our first priority is pretty much just getting our mountain base established. And we're also going to need a crap load of food. Oh, also something I forgot to mention. If I go into the world map, the way that you get a map to generate at 5% size is by just opening dev mode in the menu. So I can disable it now, but it is necessary in order to actually generate maps this small. I like how we start with a pet boom rat named Daphne. I feel like that's not going to go over well later. Oh my god, I hadn't checked the faction list at this point. It completely lags out my game. Look, everything- I can't- I can't even play the game. These deer look like they're in a PowerPoint. So with all these factions on one map, you might be wondering, what does this actually do? Well, for starters, you probably notice there's a lot less bases here than you'd expect. The reason for this is that as you scale up the number of factions, the number of bases each faction has decreases. And because there's like 8 billion factions, every single one has like one base. So with all these factions, normally in the game, it just causes a lot of lag. In our case, it uh, also causes a lot of lag. But because we have the hospitality mod, this actually gets really, really silly really quickly. And for those of you who don't know what the hospitality mod is, I'll explain it as we go along. But the main thing that you need to know right now is that we're going to be making a giant hotel for visitors. All right, so we're starting to get the basics of everything down. We have some food growing up here and our base is getting mined out slowly. So normally in terms of housing, you know, you want to give your colonists their own rooms, maybe smooth out the floors, make them very pretty so that they get positive mood bonuses. And the same usually applies for guests when you want them to visit. But that's assuming I actually care about our guests. And much like every other hotel in the world, I do not. So our goal is to build a massive barrack the size of Cthulhu's forehead in order to house tons and tons of visitors. Quipped about fighting muggers with Lego. Quipped about using rockets with Lego. God, I love being American. Oh, we got our first raid. And it's from Old Man Jenkins from the uh, Al, 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 Al Gore dynasty. So in terms of research, we're going to get batteries and then probably go straight for microelectronics because we need comms consoles really badly. Because that allows us to actually communicate directly with other factions, which is specifically impactful in terms of hospitality. Oh god, I had a mad buck. Looks like Bambi's not going to have a father either. Oh uh, yeah, transport pod crash from the Gyra's clan. And I mean, this person's actually not that bad, so I will go ahead and rescue them. So we got a combat supplier and the solitary predator quest. So I'm just going to sell this for Lego because I don't really care that much. I don't want to make enemies with the Empire for this run, so we're just going to go ahead and help this guy. Oh, god damn it. I didn't realize Veronica was all the ways out here, and now she has to fight this cat on her own. Oh, god damn it, Veronica. <laughs> she has eight melee, and she's somehow lost. Further proof that this is a cat world, and we're merely allowed to exist in it. Oh, come on. Okay, well, that sucks a lot. Now, I think ours will barely grow because they're only planted in fertile soil, but it's still really sucks. Uh, oh, I've actually never seen that. So because we rescued and helped Ace Vito, I guess they're a guest now. Now, normally I would be more than willing to charge people for food, especially when they are on the verge of starvation, extra profits. But unfortunately, Ace Vito is uh, not exactly a paying customer. Actually, wait a minute, I totally forgot. I could actually just recruit this person because I have a bunch of friends with them. So one of the other mechanics with hospitality is that when someone visits your colony, if you make enough friends with them, you can actually just outright recruit them. Now, this is actually going to cost us quite a few relations with the faction. However, there are also 100 factions in the game, meaning I don't give a crap. 
All right, so thus far, we're kind of closing in on a lot of the things that we needed to get going. I also need to spend a lot of time making sure our barracks is huge and looks really good because that's most of why our people will actually want to stay. All right, and we actually got our first random visitors. By clicking Assure Safety, we now have a bunch of visitors that'll spawn on the edge of the map. I do need to very quickly actually give them some beds because they, they do need somewhere to sleep. That is kind of important. But as soon as we have that, now you can see that it flood into our colony and and they should begin to claim these beds. So at the bottom of our beds thing here, we actually have the ability to increase the price of beds. And with pricing beds, we could do a little bit of silliness. However, the attractiveness of beds and hospitality is relative, which means that visitors will always go for the most attractive beds they can afford, no matter how expensive. And there we go, two Glitter World Medicine as a gift. Now, I didn't actually charge these guys anything for their rooms, but next time we could use a little tiny trick that to uh, completely exploit exploits people of their cash. Oh, and we actually get a raid. No, my cord, get away from it. And I don't know if we can really save this. I mean, that's a lot of fire. I'm just gonna cross my fingers and Daphne, Daphne, what are you doing? You are so dumb. Oh, thank God. Okay, the drought's over, which means that our plants should start growing at really fast rates again, which is nice. What's nice about having so many factions is that I don't really care if any single faction becomes hostile with us because there's just 99 other ones to go around. So I can just keep arresting or recruiting people that come into my colony and it just doesn't matter at all. Oh, and we got some more visitors that are heading to the colony. Now I'm going to do my best to do a little bit of a gamer move here. And we call this just a little bit of illegal price gouging. Now accomplice in here actually has 108 silver which means that they are able to stay at any of these beds so there we go unfortunately waffles only has 29 so if i just lower the price of the bed down to 20 there we go effectively scamming these people out of all of their money and of course i can just lower the price back down for the next visitors but the damage is already done this means that no matter who comes into our colony i can basically scam them for all of their money just by changing the prices of the beds in front of their very eyes. But if you think this is the only way we're going to be scamming people for money, oh ho ho, how wrong you are. Another small detail is that visitors actually kind of help us do work. It's not normally a lot of work. Like, as you can see here, Kaplison is just going to start hauling a little tiny bit of rice back to our colony. But it does scale really well when we have tons and tons of visitors because they basically do all of our hauling and cleaning for us. So we're almost to microelectronics, so I'm probably just going to try to speed ahead through right until we get that because that's when things get really absurd. I just charged them all of their money in order to stay here and totally scam them and they still gave me a gift. Oh hey, and it looks like uh, Kappelson is actually back. And how much money did you bring this time? Oh, and a good old $35. Okie dokie. And just like last time, we can raise the price of all of our guest beds to 30, meaning that she immediately has to fork over all of her cash in order to stay with us. Okay, so we just got inspired research for glasses. Now, I am going to show you is a little bit of a trick regarding this. Technically, this inspiration will wear off the moment you finish a technology. So what you do is if you wait just until you're about to finish the technology and then you just switch to a different one, the inspiration actually lasts the full eight days. Now, I'm not gonna use this because I really want microelectronics right now, but you can use that in the future for other things. Okay, and looks like Kappelson has left us another gift of 17 hexagel. I don't really know where you were storing that or where you got it from, but thanks. Now, getting the same visitors over and over again, and eh, I guess that's something. But now that we have microelectronics, I can go ahead and use a comms console and then add some orbital trade beacons as well. Now the comms console is important because it allows us to contact other factions. I've never before seen a scroll bar on the factions that we can contact, but with all of these people here, we can actually go ahead and call them. And so by calling them, now we have an option, invite for a visit. Now I'm gonna go ahead and invite a lot of people to visit our colony. Uh, may maybe I'll go with like 10 different groups or something like that. I'm not really sure. The point being, it's it's going to be a decent amount. Now, when we call someone, we do actually have to wait a couple of days for them to get to our colony, but um, as soon as that actually happens, it's it's, uh, it's going to get a little packed around here. Oh, hey, it looks like Capelson. Oh my god. I, I love you, Capelson. This is like her third time. This, this is like her fourth or fifth time visiting at this point. You'd figure she'd get some kind of frequent customer discount. Unfortunately, 
oh, we don't offer those. Give me all your money. All right. And it looks like the visitors are going to start flooding in, which is nice. And oh my goodness, these guys, whoo, these guys are rocking in the cash. Mind if I uh, just have a, just a couple of these dollars? I know, I know that this person over here has a little bit less money. So it's, there we go, Red. Uh, exclusive discount just for you. Now it's only 60 for everything. Oh man, look at that. And a gift of some on your fine uranium crystals. They are absolutely amazed by your hospitality. Gee, I, yeah, yeah, sure. I'm so glad that people love it when I steal all their money. All right, so right now we're basically just trying to gather enough visitors here in order to have them consistently keep revisiting the colony. For whatever reason, it is a little buggy when I go to actually invite people for a visit because this isn't entirely accurate. But after I do it enough times, we should have enough consistent visitors to the colony that things just start to get absurd. Oh God, it makes me so happy to look at my guest mood and see I had to pay a fee for my bed. Well, hell buddy, that's not gonna be the last fee you pay. Our visitors are starting to get to the upper limit of what is possible. As you can see, we do have a good amount of people that are visiting the colony right now. Guest has nothing to eat times three. Ah, oh, come on guys, just deal with it. All right, now this is where a new thing comes in called the shopping zone. If I go ahead and I set the shopping zone as uh, right here, just these meals, I can actually go ahead and set it for every single person here to go shop at that zone, which means that when they get hungry, they're actually gonna have to forcibly take food from this simple meal thing in order to not die. And better yet, we get to actually charge them for it too. Now, what I am realizing is that we're not really being as efficient as we can be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make a nutrient paste dispenser and then force everyone to buy from that. Oh, I love capitalism. And still, still somehow, despite the cramped and disgusting conditions, people love visiting and are giving us gifts that aren't really all that valuable, but it's the money that we care about. Oh my God, we're charging people $10 per nutrient paste meal. This is such a scam. We're running the world's greatest McDonald's here. All right, things are starting to get a little out of hand. The, the number of people here is drastically increasing as I continuously invite more and more people to come to our colony. But on the bright side, uh, our profits have never looked better. We've made like a thousand silver over the past two or three days. It's actually kind of insane. I'm also somehow running out of beds, so we do, we do need to just keep building beds. Oh God, the conditions that people are living in at this point are just absolutely depraved. No, go away. I don't want you anymore. We are also quickly running into a food crisis because I am feeding so many people here at the colony. Now, at this point, a weak man might say, okay, let's hold off on the colonists and the visitors. But a wise man would say that we should double down on our strategy and continue to invite more people and upcharge the cost of our food even more. Nobody leaves and nobody eats. Oh man, and just like that, we're now up to 3,000 silver and it's only gonna get higher as people are forcibly eating out of the nutrient paste dispenser. Wait, I think they actually spend all their money on nutrient paste meals and they can't afford a bed. I mean, I would love to help you guys. I really would. It's just that I don't want to. Oh, and we got another visitor group. How many is it this time? All right, it's another, it's another seven people. It's all right, I guess. And already they're getting here and immediately they can't claim beds because <laughs> they're all broke. All right, looks like that expansion is gonna have to come in a little bit earlier than I thought it would. Let's, let's just roll it on out. Oh my God, it's the first score that isn't a 100. I'm devastated. I... I really am. Uh, did, did you guys give me all your money? Oh God, our visitors are starting to have social fights. People have arrived. Oh yeah, yeah, come on, I'm, I'm sure it's fine. I think, I think I might have gone too far. Oh God. No, it's in my food room. Okay, well, I only have four colonists. So like, I don't think this is gonna be that bad, but are, are they gonna help me fight or are they just gonna sit here and die? Oh no, they expected more from you. <laughs> Chief Anger, look, you, you, you guys are fine. It's not a big deal. Oh no, they're, they're just walking in and opening the door for the insects. Okay, this, this can't end well. I like how all of our guests are just sitting here idly while absolutely, like, they're not even doing anything while the insects are just slowly breaking through. Oh no, they really enjoyed their stay. They'll visit again in a few days. I'm not sure there's gonna be anything left to visit. All right, on the bright side, we have a lot of uh, meat shields in the way between us and them. So we might survive this, if not barely. Oh no, oh, I, I knew, I knew this would happen.
happen. Oh no, okay, the temperature is rising just a little bit in, in the second room over there. Uh, if it destroys the nutrient paste dispenser, I think we're in a bit of trouble. Um, okay, this... This is maybe not getting great. Uh, people are dying of heat stroke. It's about 300 degrees. You gotta be kidding me. Some of the people are just stuck on the outside of the settlement because their friends are currently burning to death in our colony. You know, I think there's really only one way to solve this. And much like every money laundering scheme, uh, I think it is time for us to go and take just a, just a little bit of our loot, our 4,600 gained silver. That's just a mass exodus of people outside the colony. They can't. It's it's 600 degrees in here. Anybody who's down is, is already dead. <laughs> Their stay was okay. I think there's really only one thing that could have prevented this. And, uh, oh. The moral of the story is, next time, charge more for the food. And subscribe. Yeah, that, that too.